Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're looking at a brand new release, Farron OS 20.10. But before we get started, please don't forget to like and subscribe or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and at the end of the day, if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon, those links are in the description down below. If you download Farron OS, throw it on a USB, or put it in a virtual box, this is the screen you're met with. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at their website real quick. Farron OS basically says, say hello to a new way to use your computer. And as you can see, out of the box, the default browser on Farron OS is Vivaldi. And what I'm going to do real quick is this sidebar over here, I'm just going to shut it off so I've got more room. And there you go. You go to their website. This is what you get. Say hello to a new way to use your computer. Farron OS is a free and open source operating system that lets you get stuff done. With a fresh take on a familiar user experience, it is based on Ubuntu. So let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit more. And it says you can download Farron OS today to start enjoying it. Latest release, 2021.10. And current notices. It's designed around the user. It's really user friendly. You know, it's one of those, if you're coming from Windows or Mac, and you want to have a familiar environment, Farron kind of makes it easier for you to transfer over. But up top, you've got Home, you've got Get Farron OS. Over here is where you can get the downloads. Then you've got News about the operating system. And then you've got the Help. You download this and decide to take the leap and install it. You want to come over here. You've got a User Guide. You've got About the OS. You can get help with Farron OS on social media, whether it be Twitter or the Farron Community Discord. So if you have problems, you can get in touch with somebody and use them forums to help you out a lot. And some of the things I've heard about it, the Firefox browser, when you download it now for Farron OS, actually has its own configuration for the Farron OS operating system, which gives it the compact mode and no title bar out of the box, plus all the pocket stuff. If you've used Firefox, the pocket stuff comes up and it's shoving all this stuff in your face is not included. And it has no stories button anymore, and it's got the home button up by the address bar by default. So let's close out of the Vivaldi web page. And when you boot up into Farron, this is the screen you're met with. You get Welcome to Farron OS. Now, if you want to start the tour, you just click on Start Tour, and it says, Just to let you know, we did some changes automatically. Farron OS has detected that it is running in a virtual machine and has therefore a minor change to its settings in order to improve the performance. The change itself is that XRender is being used as the default compositor. That being said, Farron OS will still have a noticeable performance hit when running in virtual machines. I don't need to install VM tools. Transfer files from Microsoft Windows. There is a transfer tool that is included with Farron OS that helps you transfer basically all your files from Microsoft Windows to Farron. You can look more into that if you download it and throw it on a USB. Then you can start installing Farron OS. We're going to look at it today, so I won't be installing it. Get third-party codecs. Because this is based on Ubuntu, you're not going to have those third-party codecs out of the box. So what you'd have to do is come down here, just install restricted codecs, and it will install it, and you can move forward. Then next, desktop mode. You've got Farron OS default, and then you've got tablet mode. So I'm going to leave it in the default, and then using the applications menu, we know how to do that. Using the desktop using the system tray, which I will show you here shortly. Desktop search, start typing while on your desktop with no open window, or strike Alt-T for the keyboard to quickly search for applications. And then the Farron store, what theme you want to go with. I'm going to go with dark. There we go. Accent color, I'm going to stay with blue. And then KDE Connect, we'll talk about that also. If you're an Android phone user, if you zip on over to the Google Play Store, download the KDE Connect app, then you can sync it up with your PC, and you can receive messages and notifications directly on your laptop or on your desktop. Then you can configure night color to help reduce eye strain, and we're all done. Now, if you just start typing, let's type, let's look for Vivaldi. You just start typing, the search bar comes down, and there's your applications for Baldi. So you can see that's functioning well. I like the background. It's beautiful background. Let's see if we can change that. Configure desktop and wallpaper. They do have some different looking wallpapers. 
I'm going to apply that one. That's a pretty looking wallpaper. I think I'm going to stick with that. So let's go ahead and just stick with that. Let's close out of that. Now you come down, you've got your panel on the right side of the panel. You've got your hidden icons. You've got your onboard, clipboard, night color control, disks and devices, lock status, KDE connect. Then you've got internet, battery level, and of course your volume. And then on the center, you've got your web browser, which is Vivaldi, which we've already looked at. Let's open up the file manager. And unlike other KDE distributions that come with Dolphin, this one comes with Nemo 5.0.3. So we'll close out of that. As you can see, you've got your usual suspects over here. And then you've got your base home folders right here. Nemo is a really light file manager. It's snappy. It's quick. It stays out of your way so you can get your work done. So let's close out of Nemo. And then the Farron store. Let's go ahead and open that up. Okay, the store has populated, and as you can see, generally looks like Ubuntu or Linux Mint, their software centers. Very familiar way to get around it. Editor's choice is listed first, and then you've got categories. And of course, you can just come up here and do a search. Let's do a search for like Caden Live. And of course, you get one from the official repository, and then the second one says it's from the Flat Hub. So you've got two ways to download that. So it's pretty easy to get around, so we'll close out of that. Let's go over here and open up the application launcher. You've got your favorites, which is Vivaldi, Files, Coco, Geary for your mail, Tour, Kate, Text Editor, LibreOffice Suite, System Settings. Let's go ahead and open up System Settings. Right here on System Settings, you can pick your theme right off the bat, Light Theme, Farron OS, or Dark Theme. I'm going to stick with what we have. You can change the wallpaper from right here. Clicking on Files and Folders, right now it's set for Select Them. Basically, what that means is you have to double click to open something. If you want to go to a single click, all you got to do is come up here and put it on that and you're good to go. Send user feedback. You've got your global theme. Let's go ahead and open that up. There's a lot to choose from in here. You've got doors, which is based on your windows. You've got Farron OS default. You've got Mac and cheese, Mac and cheese dark. So there's lots of different ways you can customize your operating system. If you want to come in here and look at it, you've got desktop layout. You've got Breeze, Classical, Doors, Mac and Cheese, Human, Farron OS Default. Let's say you wanted to go with Doors. Go ahead and apply. And it gives you that Windows 11 type feel down here. So we'll just leave that. And then Colors, Icons, Cursors. You can adjust all of this and customize it to the way that you want it. Personalization of KDE Connect, Screen Locking, Applications, Notifications, Virtual Desktops. You basically have your standard list of KDE settings. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know there are thousands of ways to customize your KDE environment. So let's go ahead and close out of settings. Let's go back down here. All apps. You've got boot repair, calculator, calendar, character map, cheese, disks, document scanner, donate to Farron, driver manager. You would go into driver manager to see if you were missing any drivers. And as you can see, it states right here that we're not. So we'll close out of that. Go back up. All apps. There's driver manager, emoji selector, files, GW package installer. If you find a dev package online and you want to use it, you download it. Once it's in the downloads folder, right click it, open it with GW, and it will install it on your system. Geary Info Center. Let's look at the Info Center. And right now, Farron OS obviously is running 5.22.5 KDE Plasma version. Kernel version is 5.11.0-37 generic. And then, of course, the graphics platform is X11. So let's go ahead and close out of that. You've got input method, install Farron OS, KDE Connect, K KDE Partition Manager, console. Let's go ahead and take a look at console and see what kind of resources we're using. Let's see if it's got HTOP installed. It doesn't. Let's see if it has top. Okay. I have issued this virtual machine three gigabytes of RAM at present at rest. With just the terminal open, we're at 812 megabytes. So that's not too bad for a KDE environment, especially with something custom looking like Farron OS. So let's close. Back down to console. Krita comes installed out of the box. Language, Latte. You could add a Latte doc if you wanted to. LibreOffice Suite. We spoke about that a while ago. And then Maps, Ocular, Remina, Software Sources, Spectacle. System maintenance, system monitor. Let's go ahead and double check the system monitor. Memory is going to show a little bit heavier here because we are in a virtual machine. So you do have a bit of the operating system running in RAM at present. 
but this is a good place to come and check what applications you have open. If there's some that have been closed but are still showing open, you can come up here and quit them. It'll give you history and give you your processes. So I like the system monitor. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. And we will come back down to software sources, spectacle store, synaptic package manager. If you're familiar with Ubuntu and a Linux Mint, synaptic package manager is a must have. It's another way to get software on your system. Just open it up. And once it's open, you can come over here and wait for it to populate. Once it's populated, you see this right here. You can go up and you can actually break it down if you want to look in a specific category. Libraries, news groups, Python, word processing, video software. I'm just going to click on it and it'll bring up video software. Or you could come up here and do a search, something like Caden Live. And there you go. Caden Live, Caden Live Data, Caden Live DBG. You could just come over here, mark it. Mark for installation. It'll tell you what dependencies that that application needs to be installed. You just click mark them all. Once it's marked, you come up here, click apply. It will install Caden Live and all of its dependencies, and you'll be ready to go. So that's Synaptic Package Manager. I actually like that more than I like most software centers. And I'm going to say that if you haven't used it before on a distribution, try it out. I guarantee you, you'll be impressed. And then you've got theme colorizer, time shift. Time shift, if you're not familiar with time shift, basically what it does is it's going to take a snapshot of your system. If you do install your system with the BTRFS or the ButterFS file system, you're going to want to click here. But if you've done anything else, just go to rsync. What you'll do is go next. Once you have your system installed, once you have all your applications that you're going to use installed, what you're going to want to do is take a snapshot. Should you have a problem or a catastrophic failure, you can boot back up into a rescue disk, open up time shift, pick a snapshot that's from a previous time when your machine was working and there was nothing wrong, hit refresh or restore, and it'll restore your machine back to the way it was and in operating order. So let's close out a time shift. And we will go back down to the bottom. You got your transfer tool. We talked about that for coming from Windows. You got VLC. You got your web browser manager. Now, this does come with Vivaldi out of the box. What Farron OS does make easy is if you do decide that you don't want to go with Vivaldi, just go to your apps, go to web browser manager. It'll open up. You've got Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Mozilla Firefox, Brave, Opera, Waterfox, Falcon, Gnome Web. If you want to uninstall Vivaldi, you just click uninstall and then pick the browser that you want to install. If you can't find it here, go ahead and uninstall Vivaldi, and then run over to the Software Center or Synaptic Package Manager, and you'll be able to find what you want to use. So let's close. And back to all apps, and I do believe that pretty much covers it, other than the welcome screen. And on the welcome screen, you've got introduction, you've got installation help, you've got community, you've got get involved, or install now. So that's basically the screen you want to go to if you put this on a USB or you run it in a virtual machine and you decide what the heck I want to install it. You can install it from the welcome screen or you can just arrow up here top left corner and install Farron OS right here. It does use the Calamares installer. So it's a very straightforward and easy to install Farron OS. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. That's pretty much the new release of Farron OS 21.10. Tell me what you think. Is it something you might download, throw in a USB or put it in a virtual machine and give it a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel, those links are in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.